Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today's founder is Catherine Van Rensselaer Schuyler. And to help us talk about Catherine, we have a very special guest, Jesse Sir Filippi from the Schuyler Mansion. Hi Jesse, thank you so much for being here. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. And as I said, you uh, work, you're a historical researcher and interpreter at the Schuyler Mansion. So you should be able to help us learn about Catherine Schuyler just a little bit. Uh, can Hopefully. I ask you, yeah, can you start, where was Catherine Schuyler from and tell us a little bit about her early life? Sure. So Catherine uh, Van Rensselaer Schuyler grew up at a place called Crayla, which is actually Schuyler Mansion's sister historic site. It's right across the Hudson River, uh, so right across from Albany, New York. And Catherine grows up in an incredibly wealthy family. Her father had about 150,000 acres when she was born in 1734. Her extended family had over 850,000 acres, so a pretty wealthy family to say the least. And she is the fourth generation of her family to be born in the colonies. They've been um, in New York or what was then the col colony of New York since the 17th century. Now, her early life, she kind of had a, a bit of a rough uh, life, I guess you could say. Um, she loses her only sister when her sister's three years old and her mother dies when she's 13. She does have uh, surviving brothers and she likely had a really good education as well because even though no detail survived to tell us like what exactly she learned, we know from later in her life from references to her that she was fluent in Dutch, English, and French and it seems like she could read and write those languages as well which tells us she received a really good education which isn't too shocking considering she had such a wealthy family and such a big upbringing um, as part of that wealthy family. And she's also going to learn things like basic mathematics, uh, fancy needlework, and how to run a household, which she would have learned from her mother before her mother's death. And part of that would be not only learning how to cook or bake especially big important dishes, but her family enslaved many people. They were the second largest slaveholding family in the Albany area. And Catherine would have learned how to oversee the labor of enslaved people when she was a child. And when she grows up and marries Philip Schuyler, she's going to be enslaving and overseeing the uh, labor of enslaved people around eight to 14 people in any given year at Schuyler Mansion. That's interesting. Now, you mentioned she had mentioned she married Philip Schuyler, who goes on to be uh, one of the highest ranking generals in the Revolutionary War. But I was curious, how did the outbreak of the war affect uh, Catherine in particular? Was there any events, perhaps, that maybe affected her life that might interest the audience? So, like, I think any family member who, uh, any, I guess, family that has a family member heavily involved in the Revolutionary War, there's going to be some fear that comes along with that, the fear of uh, especially loyalist attacks, which uh, does happen to the Schuylers, but not uh, during the beginning of the war and not even when Schuyler's in command, it happens later on, and the separation from her husband, but that honestly doesn't happen as much because Schuyler has many different illnesses, mainly gout, so he's not really on the battlefield as much as you might think he is, um, and she's often taking care of him at different times, but he is away still. She does worry about him, especially because of his ill health, so I say that seems to be an impact for her, but I think one of the big things that she is involved in would be the Bowels of Saratoga, which take place, you know, 40 miles north of Albany. And the Schuylers have a house up there too. They have, we're, I work at Schuyler Mansion, their Schuyler House, which is a national park, um, not to confuse them, uh, they get confused all the time. And uh, that was their kind of like 
his business place. Um, sometimes it's referred to as like a summer home. It was their other property. It wasn't their main property. And before the battles of Saratoga, they know Burgoyne's advancing down from Fort Ticonderoga. Skyler actually is blamed for losing Fort Ticonderoga. Um, so he is making Burgoyne's advance down toward Saratoga really difficult, but it's clear that Burgoyne's going to get there. So Catherine is going to their home up in Saratoga with a woman named Jenny, who is one of the women the Schuylers enslaved, and she's taking, uh, Catherine's taking her two-year-old daughter Cornelia with them as well, um, and they make two trips up to Saratoga to get all this furniture from that house. And we don't know much about what they're do, doing except for the fact that they're getting furniture and to get up to Saratoga takes almost like the better part of a day. So they set out, I think around like six or something and they get there around four. Now it takes like 40 minutes. Um, so it was, it was a bit of a hike and they do this within days of each other coming back and forth. And Jenny is either going to help Catherine get the furniture and or tend to baby Cornelia as well. So that's one big thing. And then Catherine also is going to host General John Burgoyne once he loses the battles of Saratoga. So uh, when Gentleman Johnny loses, uh, he is the Schuyler's prisoner guest, as they called him. And he comes to Schuyler Mansion, stays there for 10 days. Catherine is uh, going to give up the master bedchamber to him. It was very common to give that to an esteemed guest. That's something that is somewhat shocking to hear, though, that she would do that for someone who, you know, is just fighting the Americans in the war. But that's what she does. Um, Burgoyne isn't really the issue. There's all these other troops who are making a life miserable for her, and they're actually American troops, not the British. Um, and Schuyler is not with her at this time. He's up at Saratoga because Burgoyne actually burnt down their house in Saratoga. So it was a good thing Catherine got the furniture out of there. And now she's hosting the man who ordered her other home to be burnt to the ground. Yeah, and literally fought a war against her spouse. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, you know, you brought up a few relationships recently, and, and I probably should have noted from the beginning that th this Catherine Schuyler is the mother of the now fairly famous Schuyler sisters uh, from, the, of course, the Broadway play Hamilton. Um, could you maybe go into a little depth? You spoke about some of her relationships, but what was her light relationship like with her children? Did she have any particularly uh, close relationships with one or the other? I know she had, what, like a dozen children or more? Yes, yeah, so Catherine actually... I guess to kind of start the Catherine with children story, um, we have a, a kind of fun opening to it is Philip Schuyler originally fights in the French and Indian War. So he's an officer during that war and he's kind of courting Catherine when he goes off to fight and he gets called home by her father and, by, and marries her. And five months later, they have their first child. Uh, so that's how Angelica Schuyler is born, the famous Angelica. And within three years, Catherine has Angelica, Elizabeth, or she's known as Eliza, and Margaret, who is known as Peggy. So they're born in the late 1750s. And then she will have 15 children overall. She does have twins and triplets among those children, and sadly, they do not survive. She loses seven out of 15 children before their first birthday. She has Angelica, Eliza, and Peggy, then three sons, Johnny, Philip, Jeremiah, and Rensselaer, and two daughters, Cornelia and Katie. And to put in perspective the age difference, Angelica and Katie actually share a birthday 25 years apart. That's a gigantic so, family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a big family. <laughs> so uh, after the war ends, the Schuylers, you know, uh, become, well, already were and continue to be one of the more prominent families in Albany, New York, and, and in New York at large. Uh, how does how does Catherine's life go after the war? 
going into the, you know, Washington administration and thereafter. Yeah, her life continues to be pretty much the same, you know, one of a uh, high profile. Both during and after the war, one of her main roles is entertaining guests at the house. And they don't only live in uh, Albany and Saratoga. At times, Schuyler is a member of different legislative bodies. So he's living, renting a home in Philadelphia and New York City. And she's going to go live with him there sometimes. Other times, she'll stay home in Albany and see things there, oversee things there. And she's going to host people like uh going back to the war she actually hosts martha washington for about a month at the schuyler mansion um but then she's going to host people like john jay um charles carroll of carrollton <laughs> um lafayette and one other one i always like to point out this is during the war as well though is she hosts henry knox and the reason i point that out is because she's hosting him days after she's given birth to Cornelia. So she is really the social face of the household. And she, in this sense, has power because where you sit is pretty much determined by Catherine, you know, who you talk to. And uh, she's also going to travel with her husband, which was common and without him. Uh, but one of the kind of cool things she does post-war is when Skyler's working on his canal out through Western New York, she goes out west with him and inspects uh, how the canal's going, which you don't hear about too many women doing. No, that's very interesting. And it makes a lot of sense, too, what you were saying about her uh, keeping up the appearances even days after birth, being a, I don't know if socialite is the right term, if they would have used that term back then, but, uh, you know, being a one of the leaders of society is then as now, I guess you could say, it was very important to keep up your appearances. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting, when you said the canal, you're are you, you're referring to the Erie Canal? Or is no, there... this is actually before the Erie Canal. Um, it has a long title, and I work at Schuyler Mansion, so I should have it memorized, <laughs> but it's something uh, along the lines of the Northern Western Inland Lock Navigation is, Oh, is something. that the one that was on the um, Mohawk River? Yes. Yeah, okay. I do believe I yeah. know which one you're referencing. Don't know the name either. Don't worry. We forget <laughs> things here all the time. It's fine. <laughs> well, Jesse, uh, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you coming and giving us this information. Please come back all the time and tell us about more Albany Founders. Uh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here, and I love talking about uh, Albany Founders, so thank you. Founder fans, I hope you enjoyed this video. A big thanks to Jesse for coming out. Uh, if you are ever planning on traveling to New York for the American Revolution, which you should because we have Saratoga up here in Ticonderoga, you must stop in Albany and see Jesse at the Schuyler Mansion. Uh, and if you want to, you can also go up north to the, uh, the Schuyler House, too. What? I don't know why I'm saying it like that. You should definitely go to both. Believe it or not, New York is an amazing place to learn about the American Revolution. Thank you, and I will be back with another fatter for you tomorrow.